Guatemala, littered with ancient wonders, temples, which pierce its dense canopy, all once declared as separate structures. Modern technology, however, has shown that these structures, mostly now submerged by dense undergrowth, was once one huge mega-metropolis, with Tikal in particular also once containing a plaque displaying a great deluge, with the site submerged in what is depicted as a cataclysm, with a volcanic eruption also in the background of said image. With mysterious megaliths still found littering the foliage, one site in particular, it would seem, evaded destruction, and the subsequent rainforest's creeping grip which has consumed much of this enormous ancient site. Known as Kirigua, it remains virtually untouched, yet the most intriguing thing regarding this site, apart from its superb preservation, are the enigmatic stone carvings not only found at the site but throughout the jungle itself. Statues and megaliths, presumably often depicting queens and kings in strained contraptions, seemingly familiar in form to modern vehicles or the interiors of an aircraft. Once claimed as mere signposts, the sheer abundance of these mystifying tributes, however, now makes this explanation unlikely. For even if merely artistically inspired, what do they depict? Why would an ancient civilization show such passion in casting these particular-looking technological devices into massive stones all over the Guatemala rainforest? With Kirigua thankfully so well preserved, we can explore a number of these baffling carved megaliths in detail. Were they trying to tell future generations something? Did they find something crashed within the forest, possibly documenting a find and proposed purposes upon these stones? Did they witness a form of craft take to the air and seemingly into the heavens? Could this have been the inspiration for why leaders of these tribes would want to be immortalized in carved, similar-appearing machines, in the hope of eternal life or indeed a craft capable of transporting them into the heavens? Vast questions still surround this ancient civilization's knowledge, one now known to have been over 10 million strong. Did this enormous, once incredibly powerful ancient civilization get visited by beings from another planet? Possibly found a crashed craft? One they attempted to depict a reverse engineering of? The fact that many depict what modern man would perceive as complex craft concepts many find highly intriguing. We also find these massive stone megaliths, the efforts undoubtedly applied to create them, their source inspiration, and indeed the images they depict by a civilization we now know were undeniably advanced and extremely ancient, once lost for millennia and only now being rediscovered, highly compelling. There are many baffling, anomalous artist depictions that litter the megaliths all over the rainforest which now submerge the super-civilization or mega-metropolis which was once known as the Mayans. Pekal's tomb and the strange rocket designs we have shared before, location now unknown, the seal seemingly showing a craft of ancient high technology, indeed not to mention his choice to have a vivid green death mask all mere coincidence? Even the stolen plaque, fortunately photographed before its mysterious theft, depicting a doomsday event, volcanic eruptions in the background, with drowning natives, which accompanied a mass submersion found and subsequently stolen from Tikal. Mere coincidence? Yet with all these compelling pieces of evidence, all these artistic accounts, whether through cover-up or lack of discovery and accurate artistically created depiction. Of this event of a peaceful trade via ancient alien contact, 
What the argument needed to become unarguable may have just been discovered deep in the Mayan rainforests. Accurate depictions created in brittle yet precious jade tablets of considerable proportions, artistic interpretations of these events, and the giving of gifts actually once occurring. A statement released by Julia Levy, the Minister of Tourism for the Mexican state of Campache, Luis Augusto Garcia Rosado, the highest-ranking government official to go on record confirming the discovery of this possible extraterrestrial life, said, quote, Guatemala, like Mexico, home to the ancient yet advanced Mayan civilization, has also kept certain provocative archaeological discoveries classified, and now believes that it is time to bring forth this information. Rosado spoke of contact, quote, between the Mayans and extraterrestrials, supported by translations of certain codices which the government has kept secure in underground vaults for some time. In a telephone conversation with the rap, he also spoke of, quote, landing pads in the jungle that are 3,000 years old, end quote. Kinnick Jainab Packel I was known by many names. Packel, Packel the Great, Eight Ahu, Sunshield, the list goes on. He was the leader of the Maya city-state of Palenique, and according to academia, this rule and the subsequent exquisite ruins left by his reign occurred within the late classic period of Mesoamerican chronology. Undoubtedly, the most astonishing relic left by this past king, and the artifact which has fueled countless ancient astronaut theories, is the casing stone found atop his tomb. Clearly depicting some form of advanced machine, yet the question has persisted. What was the type of machine? Or indeed, what was its past function? Are we peering upon a schematic for an ancient spacecraft? Why would a king that we feel is clearly from a lost civilization go to such considerable effort having this contraption depicted upon his burial chamber? Before his name was securely deciphered from extant Maya inscriptions, only within the last few decades, may I add, little was known of this intriguing ruler. He had been known by an assortment of nicknames, and we find it interesting that, regardless of the clearly advanced knowledge bestowed within the ancient constructions of such sites, academics continue to create suspiciously complete timelines surrounding these structures, their rulers, and even dating the builds. Yet their explanations as to how these tasks were completed are utterly absent from the thousands of books written funded, supported, and published by this select group of influential individuals. However, during our own research, we have found a compelling lead regarding this ancient site. A set of images, purportedly showing an artifact once found beneath Pockel's tomb. And although we have been unsuccessful in finding any more photography of the artifact, we have found out where it is currently being held. The Mexican National Museum. What makes this particular artifact so compelling to us is its resemblance to rocket thrusters. Its deliberately sculpted shape is uncanny of a three-cone rocket and was clearly not intended to be an ornament with such an awkward form. This artifact, if indeed depicting some form of ancient thruster, throws up some rather controversial yet astonishing questions. Is it a mere basalt sculpture? Or is it actually made from some sort of metal? Was this artifact created by Pockel? Was it his idea? Or was it a craft that his people found and subsequently brought to him? A vessel Pockel attempts to depict on the case of his tomb. According to the very limited information we were able to extrapolate from the web, it is being housed within the bowels of the Mexican National Museum. We are unfortunately yet to find any more pictures of this clearly compellingly shaped artifact that was once found beneath a tomb many feel actually depicts a space-going craft. Why has there not been more heard of this intriguing artifact? Is it being hidden by the Mexican government? We find the shape of this artifact, its found location, 
and its clear academic elusiveness as highly compelling. Hi guys, so today I wanted to share with you an amazing story. It's about a very bright 15-year-old young lad named William Godori. He has found something archaeologists have missed for centuries. The young lad often wondered why Mayan cities were not located near rivers and seemed to be randomly plotted. This is where the boy made a miraculous discovery. He realized that the ancient ruins aligned with star constellations above, and by using Google Earth, he managed to match up 117 ancient Mayan ruins with star constellations. Even discovering a set of three stars the Mayans clearly held in high regards that we were unaware of previously. I did not understand why the Maya built their cities away from rivers, on marginal lands and in the mountains, Godori told French-Canadian magazine Journal de Montreal. They had to have another reason, and as they worshipped the stars, the idea came to me to verify my hypothesis. I was really surprised and excited when I realized that the most brilliant stars of the constellations matched the largest Maya cities. By plotting these star locations, William has seemingly discovered the ruins of a very ancient pyramid, accompanied by a city in ruins, untouched by humans for over a thousand years. As Daniel Delisle from the Canadian Space Agency told Samuel Osborne at The Independent, the satellite images revealed certain linear features on the forest floor that looked anything but natural. There are enough items to suggest it could be a man-made structure, he said. Godori has tentatively named the lost city Kaakchi, meaning fire mouth, and will be working with researchers from the Canadian Space Agency to get his discovery published in a peer-reviewed journal. He'll also be presenting his findings at Brazil's International Science Fair in 2017. However, in a strange development, a scientist, supposedly, quote, familiar with this Mexican region where the odd city-like features have been discovered, says at least one of them is an abandoned cornfield. How he knows this is unknown. We visited them, and my grad students know them quite well. Anthropologist Joffrey E. Braswell from the University of California, San Diego's Mesoamerican Archaeology Laboratory told George Dvorsky at Gizmodo. Whether this is an attempt at concealing the finds from the public is unknown, but it is sure to put a halt to a public disclosure of all of Godori's finds at Brazil's Science Fair. There are indeed confirmed lost Mayan cities in this region, two only being discovered last year. One was a completely new find, while the other was a rediscovery a confirmation of reports of its existence. With the young man coming up with such a compelling theory, complete with confirmed hypothesis, and ruins being confirmed as dotting the 1800 square mile region of jungle, you have to wonder how specialists construct such positive leads off from such a bright young person without further investigation, whether withheld from public scrutiny or not. As always, thanks for watching guys, take care. There has been a lot of incorrect information shared over the years in reference to the Mayan calendar and what exactly it predicted. Although a number of sources claimed that the end of the calendar indicated an apocalyptic event, the truth of the calendar's accuracy is, regardless, incredibly impressive. A calendar that tracks solar events and cyclical solar eclipses along with the infamous hieroglyphic book known as the Dresden Codex, in which has now become known as the Lunar Table, documented an 11,959-day cycle, which are subdivided into groups, each of which accurately predicts solar eclipses and other celestial events far into the distant future. What's more, no one knows how old the calendar is, even academically believed to have predated the Mayan civilization, merely adopted due to its incredible insight, with it being even more accurate than modern-day calendars to as much as ten-thousandth of a degree. Of all ancient calendar systems, the Maya and Mesoamerican systems were the most intricate. The calendar used a 20-day month and add two years within our own modern calendar year, known as the 260-day sacred round, or Tzolkin. But it also included the 365-day cycle, known to them as the vague year, or Hob. The 52-year period of time was to them known as the bundle, and meant the same to the Maya as our century does to us. 
The two calendars would then coincide every 52 years. The reason for this is so far unknown. Although, it must be noted, the Dogon tribe claimed to have been visited by extraterrestrial beings from twin stars near Sirius, a claim astronomically confirmed several decades after this was documented, with a celebration taking place every 60 years, which does indeed match a full orbit of these stars, something that, to them, should have been impossible to have known. But I digress. No one is certain how such an unusual calendar came into being. Although the 260-day cycle may tie several celestial events together, with Mars, appearances of Venus, or eclipse seasons all logged as possibilities. It may also represent the interval between conception and the birth of children, used to determine important activities related to the gods. It was undoubtedly believed in, used to name individuals, predict the future, decide on auspicious dates for battles, marriages, and so on. The sacred round is composed of two smaller cycles, with the numbers 1 through 13, coupled with 20 different day names. Each of the day names is represented by a god who carries time across the sky, thus marking the passage of night and day. Some of these being animal gods, with archaeologists pointing out that the sequence of animals matches sequences of the modern zodiac which was also used in many other ancient civilizations worldwide. The question is, where did all this knowledge come from? Or indeed, where did it go? Although it did not predict an apocalypse as many claimed, we find this ancient cyclical calendar highly compelling. <laughs>